Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight it is my pleasure to appear with Cloris Leachman on the General Electric Theater. This is the southern town of Lystra. Some 2,000 people call it home. To me, it's just an overnight stop. I'm Laren McCall, magazine writer. Specialty, debunking legends, exploding myths. My coming to Lystra is just coincidence. Or fate. Or maybe something else. He's gone, but he's coming back. He's coming back. If he goes 10,000 miles, look away. Drizzling. Mm. Won't you get wet up there? What do you do up north in New York when it rains? We know enough to come in out of the rain. What do you do? We let it rain. Uh, can I help you, mister? Yes, uh, I need a room for the night. Most folks do, even in New York. Say, does New York stick out on me or something? It does on your car plate, son. Oh, well, how about it? Do you have a room? It ain't my place to say. I'm just a bellboy. You better ask Mr. Culpepper. Well, Mr. Culpepper? Uh-huh. You want to register, I expect. Yeah, that's right. Hold on, son. Where are you going? To register. I got it right here. It saves walking. Laren W. McCall, Watertown, New York. What's the W for? Winton. Oh, is it important? No. Salesman? No, a writer. You the L.W. McCall that has them articles in uh, Collier's and the Saturday Evening Post? That's right. You've read them. Sometimes I have quite a wait at the barber shop. Sour mouth tales, as I recall. Well, that's my secret. See, if you write an article about a sweet old lady, you could paper your room with rejection slips. But if you can prove the sweet old lady's fronting for a nationwide bookmaking ring, you have to beat the editors away with a riding crop. Going to write something about this, sir? No, just passing through. Uh, what time is dinner served? Uh, 6.30. Only down here we call it supper. Thanks. I wouldn't eat it if I was you. Why not? It's your hotel, isn't it? Mr. McCall, I've been setting the best dinner table in North Carolina for 43 years. Always the same price. Four bits. But these days, to make out on dinner, I have to scrimp on supper. Where do you eat supper? At the Morgan Place. Best supper table in North Carolina. Skimps on dinners. I'll walk over with you as soon as I hide my cash box. In the umbrella stand. Hold on, son. Front. Uh, right here, Mr. Cull. Room 12. Uh, never mind. I I'll take it up later. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, why don't you talk the while to Leah Bear? Uh, is that the girl in the tree? Pretty, ain't she? It's her mama sets the supper table. Like a marble goddess. Hey, that's it. What's it? There's no statue out there in the square. This is the first town I've passed south of Richmond that didn't have a Confederate monument. How come? Suppose you ask her. She knows. Hey, Leah Bear. A friend of mine wants to know why there is no secession statue here in Lister. Name is McCall. Laren Winton McCall. Aims to eat over at your house. Hi. Nice out, isn't it? Well, if you like a nice, healthy drizzle. I like to sit in the rain, don't you? I'll take an umbrella. Well, that takes all the fun out of it. 
Like swimming with your clothes on or sleeping with the windows down. I bet you think the rainbow is a spectrum. Well, uh, isn't it? Here in Lister, we call it the hem of heaven's gown. We like it that way. Well, uh, what does that have to do with the missing Confederate monument? We don't need one. The whole town is a monument. You see, Lister is a town where all the young men volunteered and rode away to the army one night. The Confederate army, I assume. That's right. They were all young and dashing. They went off on white horses, laughing and singing gallant songs, wearing yellow sashes. They were all lost. Every young man in the town. It's sad. Sure, they probably fell out at a saloon five miles outside of town. I don't understand. Oh, come now. That's one of the standard myths made up of Moonlight and Magnolia. You'll excuse me, Mr. McCall. Mom will be waiting supper. Oh, wait a minute. Wait. I'll help you down. Uh, Miss Morton. Thank you, Mr. McCall. Well, it was my pleasure, Miss Morton. I wondered what you'd be like. What? I like you just the way you are. Mom will be waiting supper. I told you not to indulge yourself so hot in the peacock pie. I couldn't say no. You know how close to her bosom beneath regards that pie. You'll be holding hot water bottle to your bosom to the balance of the night. I can tell you that right now. Bernice Morgan, it will do you no good to pursue me with that coffee pot. Oh, but won't you have just another dab, Mr. Colfax? Not if I should hang for it. How about you, Mr. McCall? Oh, no, thank you. I've done very well. McCall, that's an odd name. Odd? Well, I mean, there aren't any in Lystra. Who are your people? Mama. When I was a girl, Lydia, that was a perfectly proper question. Well, originally, my folks all came from Watertown. Of course, way back, there was one. Uh, say, hey, hey, don't uh, leave those uh, skeletons in the closet. <laughs> Bernice, I'll thank you to uh, finish off antebellum style with the... Uh, Swallow of that uh, fine peach brandy. It's a Lister custom, you know. They toasted their ladies in peach brandy just before they went off. They? The young men that never came back. Care to join me, Mr. McCall? No, thank you. In that case, Leah Beth, why not show him the sword in the tree? If he wants to see it. Of course he does. <laughs> I'll have that spot for you in just a minute, Mr. Carl. I just have to pick up the table. Who put it there? One of those who went away and never came back. My aunt was living here then. She was my great, great aunt, really. I was 22, just like she was. And that night, she stood there on the gallery, in the moonlight, waiting for her lover to come by and say farewell. He came up the path yonder, and they met. They sat by the edge of the pool, and let their fingers in the water lazy like. And when he left her, he drew his sword and stuck it in the tree. It was only a sapling then, but he swore that so long as the sword remained there, the honor of this house would be without blemish. The tree grew up around the sword. But there it is, still there. He was uh, riding a white horse. Wearing a yellow sash. Mm -hmm. I know how she felt. Waiting night after night in the moonlight. Waiting for the sound of the horse's hooves. For the flash of the yellow. Waiting to feel his arms around her. Waiting to be kissed. I 
I like to sit out here and let the dew fall all around me. You uh, think there'll be some dew tonight? You want your umbrella. Oh, no, I can take my dew straight. I'll just slip in for a wrap. I'll be back directly. Got in a little late last night, eh, son? Uh, the dew was behind schedule. You know, Mr. Cull, there's a sword hanging in a tree over there at the Morgan place. Only when you get some light on it, it's a rusty old scythe blade. Looks nicer in the moonlight. They say hereabouts that moonlight don't mommick. Don't what? Mommick. It's an old word we have. Mommick's a destroyer. When something's mommicked, it's dried out and shriveled up. I suppose that's what happened to uh, Leah Beth's great aunt. In a way, time is a mommick, and it caught up with her. She told folks that she was married secret. She had to tell them something. And time went by, and she finally realized that he would never come back. So she puned it up and died of shame and a broken heart. That's a pretty story, Mr. Cobb, but it won't sell. The market these days is for balloons with pins in them. That's how I make my living. I just travel around looking for big balloons full of hot air. Sort of a traveling mummy, eh, okay, son? I guess so. You know, Lystra is drugged. This whole town is remembering things that never were. Now, you take Leah Beth. Just as a cross-section, sir. Uh, yeah. She's living in a moonlit dream listening for the sound of horses' hoofs, watching in the moonlight for the flash of yellow sashes. I'll bet you're a whiz-bang writer, son. Suppose I should kiss Leah Beth. Suppose? Mr. Cow, Mama sent me over for a dab of cooking sherry. Delighted, Leah Beth. Run. Uh, yo. Harold, run out back and decant a dab of cooking sherry for Ms. Morgan. Why don't you go on with your supposing, Mr. McCall? All right. When a man kisses a girl, he wants her to feel it now, not retroactive to 1860. That was a good year. Leah Beth, it looks pretty in the moonlight. But that sword is a rusty old scythe blade. Is it? We always thought it was a sword. Leah Beth, I saw the mark on the blade where the scythe handle went. You have a real northern imagination, don't you? I'll just go back and save Harold a step. Wait a minute. Last night... Well, you and I... I know. Last night was the dark of the moon, wasn't it? The kind of night that boy rode off so many years ago. The kind of moon night you'd dream he might come back. Last night was no dream. Wasn't it? Mighty pretty girl. Yes, with a wall of lace antimacassars between her and reality. She's way back yonder waiting for some runaway lover that died three generations ago. If a man wanted her, he'd have to tear all that away. Where can I send a telegram? At the depot, why? I think I'll tell my editor what my next article's going to be. Lystra, I'm going to mummick your legend. White horse, yellow sash, sword and all. Is that for sure? Why? Because underneath all that magnolia meringue, that's a real girl. I had a suspicion. And I want her here and now in this century. And to do that, I gotta yank her and this whole town right out of that dream. <laughs> You've got your mommy can cut out for you right enough. Well, I'll have to stay around for a little while. Do you want me to register again? That's all right, son. I signed you up for a couple of weeks last night. 
<laughs> Acts like a fellow in love. <laughs> Still tell the difference between a sword and a side. Oh, the more I look at it, the more I realize that's the first curved Highland broadsword I've ever seen. Some might even erroneously call it a claymore. You are sweet, Larry. You're a gentleman and a darling. A week ago, I was a momic. You're a darling. Jenny, when are you going to learn to teach Brandy so straight she lives? Jenny, I had to toast the gallant company of Lister now, didn't I? Next time you do your toasting and Dr. Pepper. I'm sure the gallant company would understand about you, Lou. You love me. I love you, Leah Beth. I love you in the rain. I love you barefooted in the dew. I'll even come riding up on a white horse if that's the way you want it. Wearing a yellow sash? No, I'm going to draw the line someplace. No sash. I don't care. That's why we say to let it rain. It's easier than trying to push the raindrops back into the clouds. Leah Beth. I'm serious now. Do you love me when the moonlight's gone? The darker the moon dreams deepest. You don't understand. I'm going to write that article. I'm going to debunk Lystra. Tear it to shreds with a national circulation. Why, you concede it, darling. Nobody in Lystra takes no account of a Yankee writer. Even if I can't find out the name of the farmhand that hung that scythe in the tree, I'll dig up enough facts to blow that legend sky high. You sweet darling. What was your aunt's name? My great great aunt? Yeah. Leah Beth. Oh, sure. Yeah, that figures. Yeah, Mama would name you after the family martyr. What was the name of the gallant cavalier that left his sword and rode off into the night? You wouldn't believe me. No, you don't. Now, don't you go writing me into that dream. Don't tell me his name was McCall. Oh, no, it was Culpepper. Oh, well, then. Larry Winton Culpepper. <laughs> Leah Beth, you've got the most delightful, dry, deadpan sense of... You mean it, don't you? He swore he'd come back for Leah Beth, and his name was Larry Winton. You're telling the truth. No wonder you looked at me so strangely when I came here. Oh, no, not strangely. Lystra understands coincidence. Coincidence? That's a masterpiece of understatement. Laren went and left his sword over a hundred years ago as a pledge of honor. Now, I have come back to redeem that pledge. You're here, darling. Oh, Leah, if the names are accidental, nobody would believe a thing like that. We would, here in Lystra. We know. Excuse me, Leah Beth. Where are you going? I gotta make a phone call. But he's coming back. Oh, he got him. Culpepper, there was a Culpepper in that gallant company that rode off and didn't come back. My great-great-uncle. How's your daddy? Fine. How did you know who I was talking to? It's like a mule, son. He knows a lot more than he lets on. You know what my father just told me? I was named after my great-grandfather. Great-grandfather's name was Laren Winton. Is that a fact? Story goes that when he came to Watertown, he 
said he was from New Jersey, but folks said it must have been pretty far south in New Jersey by the way he talked. Chances are he was a Confederate deserter. The family joke was that he was a horse thief. Why a horse thief? And Dad said that when he came to Watertown, he was poor as Job's turkey, but he was riding a fine white horse. So Lystra isn't the town where all the boys were lost. Grandpa Winton didn't die in the war. So what do I tell her? I thought you were so all fired up on the truth, son. Every day, prosaic truth. But there's a difference between a lover who rode away to his death and a deserter who left a young girl to die of shame. Well, now you have all the facts to uh, mimic that legend. What are you going to do, son? If you destroy a dream, what happens to the dreamer? Let it rain. 